and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. The Atlas V RD-180 main engine and five solid rocket boosters ignite to lift the rocket away from the pad. Together, the main engine and five SRBs generate a combined liftoff thrust of 11.5 million newtons, or 2.6 million pounds. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. The Atlas V reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound at 35 seconds. The first two SRBs are jettisoned at 1 minute 47 seconds, followed a second and a half later by the remaining three SRBs. Approaching payload fairing jettison, the Atlas V is burning propellant at a rate of 907 kilograms, or 2,000 pounds per second, traveling more than 11,000 kilometers, or 6,900 miles per hour, and located 124 kilometers, or 77 miles in altitude, and 283 kilometers, or 176 miles downrange. During ascent, the spacecraft is protected inside a 5-meter diameter payload fairing. This two-piece shell encapsulates both the Centaur upper stage and the satellite. At approximately 3 minutes 25 seconds, the vehicle is climbed above the densest part of Earth's atmosphere and the payload fairing is jettisoned. At 4 minutes 26 seconds, propellant levels deplete and the main engine shuts down. Six seconds later, the Atlas Centaur separation system activates to release the booster stage. The vehicle now weighs a little more than 5% of what it did at liftoff. At 4 minutes 42 seconds, the first Centaur main engine burn begins, sending the Centaur into a circular orbit. At 11 minutes 47 seconds, cutoff of the Centaur main engine, or MECO-1, occurs. Following an 11-minute coast to an optimized longitude to allow for proper alignment of the second burn to geosynchronous transfer orbit, the Centaur main engine is restarted for the second of three engine burns. A little more than six minutes later, second cutoff of the Centaur main engine occurs. At 29 minutes 24 seconds, a payload attached to the Centaur's aft bulkhead separates. This 12U CubeSat is provided by the Space Force and designed to test new capabilities of small satellites used by U.S. government agencies. Following separation, the mission enters a more than five-hour coast phase. This ultra-long coast is made possible by the addition of an extended mission kit. The kit outfits the Centaur with the extra batteries and insulation required to survive the long trip to Apogee. Taking AEHF-6 to Apogee allows Centaur to perform a final burn to raise the spacecraft's perigee. At 5 hours 36 minutes, the main engine ignites for a third and final burn. A minute and a half later, Centaur completes its final engine cutoff following total fuel depletion. Also known as minimum residual shutdown, this capability maximizes the energy AEHF-6 receives to orbit, taking it farther than a guidance-controlled shutdown and ultimately increasing the lifespan of the satellite. At 5 hours, 40 minutes, 57 seconds, Centaur releases AEHF-6 on its mission to provide communications for high-priority military, ground, sea, and air assets. This Atlas V flight is the first mission for the United States Space Force.